Hello, everybody. My guest today is Zvi Schreiber. He is the founder and CEO of a company called Freightos, the internet marketplace for the trillion dollar international freight industry. Previously, he was the CEO of Light Tech, which was acquired by GE, and founder and CEO of Unicorn, uh, acquired by IBM. Additionally, he uh, he was founder of G. I think it's just pronounced G Host, a predecessor of Dropbox. G oh, it's just Ghost. Great ghost, the predecessor of Dropbox, which ended in a fire sale. He's spoken widely and written many articles and patents. He's got a PhD in computer science and is the author of Fizz, which tells the history of physics as a novel. Zvi, are you ready to take us to the top? <laughs> hey. How are you this morning? Terrific. Very, Thanks for having me on. Yeah, no, thank you for coming on. Look, I love businesses like this because you get sick of hearing about these Silicon Valley companies that are competing for eyeballs in some media world that's like not really real. You're taking what you know and solving a real world problem and having some good success. And you had one that was in a fire sale. So that's a, you know, may, people might consider that a failure, but there's probably some interesting lessons there as well. So this will be a good one. Why don't you kick us off? Tell us what Freitos does and what's your revenue model? How do you generate money? Yeah, I mean, Freitos is uh, targeting the world of international freight. And if you just look around yourself there, you'll see that, uh, you know, most of the items in your house are imported uh, or in your office. So your your headphones, the, that screen, most of those books will be manufactured and printed in China or, or Vietnam or, or Lithuania or, or wherever wherever it is. So, in fact, 90 percent of the products that uh, that we buy in, in the West are imported. So our entire uh, lifestyle is very dependent on international freight. Uh, and like you said correctly in the introduction, um, it's a very, very large industry. It's about a trillion dollars are spent each year on shipping uh, goods between countries. So and is that, very, very break that down for me, Zvi. Is that trillion dollars? Is that like the gas for the boat plus the cargo container? Like what break down the three biggest costs in that trillion dollar spend? Yeah, so it's it's sort of door to door in the end. So it's the truck to get to the port. It's the ocean liners. So it's the, uh, I mean, it's, it's your share of the gas and of the of the ship. Uh, ship can contain up to eighteen thousand containers right now, but your stuff is in one of those containers, and you're paying your your share of the of the gas and the other operating costs and the capital costs of the ship. Uh, then the handling, the port handling, it, it could come in through Long Beach, for example, is the biggest port in in the U.S. and California. So you're paying for the port handling, and then you're paying for a train or a truck to get it all the way to the destination. So it's the t totality of all of that, uh, prob probably the ocean shipping, uh, and also the airlines as well uh, are, are the biggest cost, because some of the more urgent stuff is going by air. So the ocean and air are probably the, the biggest cost components, but there's a lot of other cost components as well. Just out of curiosity, how many car cargo containers per month does Long Beach process? Ooh, I could look that up for you. Or per um, year. Do you know any any context there? It's it's in the millions, okay. um, but I don't remember, remember the number off, off the top of my head. Okay, great. So this is a world that is known by like these big, ugly containers that you stack in a very unsexy way on these big, slow ships. Like you're bringing some attractiveness to the industry, right? So tell us what Freitos does. How do you how do you optimize this stuff? Yeah, so believe it or not, this big industry is very uh, inefficient. And in the end, we, we all pay for that because when you buy an imported item and, and most of what we buy is imported, you're paying a little bit extra for the inefficient shipping. So believe it or not, when, when you call up a, a big freight forwarding company and you say, I want to bring a container from Shanghai to, you know, where, wherever it is, Cincinnati or, or San Diego, um, you're going to wait an average of three days just for a price quote. Wow. Uh, so even though this is done millions of times a year, it's still very manual. Every single time people send an email to China, they look things up in Excel, and, and you're going to wait two, three, four days just for a price quote. Um, so the industry is very much uh, forgotten in the previous century. Now, contrast that to if you want to travel to a different country, you know, you go online, you go to Expedia, you go to, to you know, Priceline. And within 20 seconds, you see all of, of the options, you book a ticket, you, you, you know, and you, you're on your way. And, and you've been able to buy a passenger ticket online for 20 years already. Mm. Um, but freight has still been completely offline. So, you know, Freightos is really just being the, the kayak or the Expedia for, for freight. We're giving the same experience that passengers have had. And now you can get exactly the same experience when you want to ship a container. You go to our website, you search, you see prices, you book, you pay, and, and your, your, goods are, your, your goods are on the way. And how do you make money? 
So like most marketplaces, well, there's, there's two ways actually, but like most marketplaces, we take a, a small cut of the transaction. So the freight forwarder who's selling the service, um, you know, we bring them, you as a, you're an importer, you find, you come to our sites, you find a freight forwarder, you find a price you like, you book. So we've done all the sales and marketing for the uh, for the seller, for the freight forwarder. And they give, give us a small percentage of that transaction. Can you name what, it, just, just so I can put a name to that, freight forwarder, are we talking like Japan would be the freight forwarder if they're shipping into Long Beach? Um, freight forwarders are companies uh, who arrange freight. Uh, some of them are names you may not know. The, some of the biggest are Kunru Nagel, Expeditors, um, C.H. Robinson in the U.S. But but these are companies who do $10, 20000000000 billion a year each. These are big companies. Okay. Uh, some of the names you may know is that UPS also has, has a freight forwarding division. Okay. Uh, and Fed, FedEx also has a freight forwarding division. FedEx does about $1 billion in freight. So it's much a much smaller business for them than the small package. Um, but many of the companies you know who do small parcels like uh, FedEx and UPS also have divisions who do freight, containers, and, and, and the like. Okay, so we have the freight forwarders, and those are the sellers in your marketplace, and who are the Correct. buyers? The buyers are any import-export company. So some of them may be e-commerce vendors who are selling on Amazon. You know, when you search on Amazon, you see lots of uh, niche companies. Uh, some of them are customers of ours. So they're using Freightos to ship stuff from China to their warehouse, and then they sell it on Amazon. Um, so other ones could be exporters as well, mm -hmm. uh, American companies who, who are producing some product, which is then exported to Europe. So any kind of importer or exporter company. Got it. So uh, we have a lot of folks listening right now that are maybe like they sell their own little product on Amazon they created, maybe a cell phone you know, whatever holder, right? A, a tripod, right? They would be considered the any any import export company in your marketplace, the buyer, and you're going to help them get connected to one of these freight forwarders, and you're going to give them price quotes from these different freight forwarders, so they can decide the cheapest way to get their camera tripod from point A to the person that just bought it. Well, uh, to be accurate, um, we probably are not going to help them get it to the person who bought it because that's small okay. so when they send it to the person who bought it it's going to go in a in a little fedex box or an envelope uh, and we don't get involved in that many other companies are dealing with that last mile uh, well we're going to help your friend who, who's selling tripods is getting every month 1000 tripods from his supplier in in uh. india to the US. So we're going to help him with his import. Got it. Um, because that's a very painful process and a very expensive process for him or her. Okay, talk money and to me though. So how do you, where do you take the percentages from? So, um, and, and then we also have a software business, which I can explain as well. But in terms okay. of the percentage, if you're bringing, if your friend is bringing, bringing one container full of tripods, let's say from Shanghai to uh, Long Beach, mm -hmm. they'd be paying in the region of $2,000 for that uh, shipment of the whole container. Okay. Uh, and, and right now we would take just 2% from the freight forwarders, so just, uh, just the 40 bucks for finding them, your, your friend as a customer. Got it. And then do you... Did, uh, did you take anything from on the seller side as well, or no? Just from the importer exporter. Just from the seller. Just from the no. Oh, just from the seller. Just so from the freight Just from payment. the freight forwarder. Okay, got it. Correct. So there's not an. We don't take a penny from the buyer. Got it. So the, the we, even without you, the freight forwarder would be quoting about two thousand dollars on average per container, right? So you're just it's the same price for them, but you're going to take forty bucks from the freight forwarder because you're basically finding them new business. Yeah, exactly. If it wasn't us, they would be paying that as a commission to their salesperson. Yep. Uh, pro probably paying a lot more. Um, and we're giving them a very efficient, uh, you know, sales channel. Yep. And they pay, they pay us 2%. Now, additionally, many of these freight forwarders, in fact, 1,000 freight forwarders are using Freightos uh, software to automate their own um, pricing in-house. So if you, if you don't come to Freightos' site, but you call up the freight forwarder by phone the old-fashioned way, they're still using our software to get you a price quote quicker. Is this a SaaS business? So, this is a SaaS business, exactly. So nice. we have our SaaS business and our marketplace business. That's a, and real quick, just because uh, I want people to stay hooked here, you raised some capital. How much have you raised in total? We've raised $50 million, yeah, the most recent round led by GE. 50 or 1.5? Five zero. Yeah, five zero. So a to you've raised a total, I think, of, of what, sixty million? No, five zero is the total. Oh total. So sorry, what was the last round? 
Uh, 25 million. 25, got it. So there's a lot of these companies I've had on that have raised 50, 60, 70, 80 million hundreds where they are combining this marketplace plus SaaS business model. And it's genius because as you drive up utility of your software tool, you're also taking a cut of whatever that utility is, be it API calls, container shipped, whatever that number is. Um, when you break down, I'm just going to make this up. When you break down 2016 revenue for you, what percentage came from just the SaaS versus came from the transaction fee in the marketplace? Oh, well, in 2016, I mean, 90 something percent was SaaS because we only launched the marketplace in 2016. So the marketplace ah. is pretty new. Okay. Uh, the SaaS business has been going for five years, but we had to do it in that order because without our SaaS, the freight forwarders are not able to do instant pricing. So they're, they're just not set up to sell in an online marketplace. So they have to first use a SaaS, automate their pricing, and then they're ready to sell in the marketplace. And, and on this particular SaaS product, about how many customers are you serving now? Uh, the SaaS is being used by 1,000 freight forwarders all around the world. That's amazing. And I imagine this is a market you have a good grasp on. How many total freight forwarders are there? I mean, are you clearly the market leader here? Uh, we are. I mean, believe it or not, there are 100,000 freight forwarders wow. in the world. Wow, that's way more yeah. than I expected. Yeah, I know. It's it's kind of unbelievable. But having said that, there's a long tail of teeny freight forwarders who are not going to be using our software, mm -hmm. and we're not approaching we're not approaching them as. So you know, there's only a few thousand who are really big enough to to matter, yeah. and we have 1,000 of them. So so we are uh, definitely a market leader in in SaaS for freight forwarding, you know, for pricing freight forwarding. Yeah. You mentioned five years ago, was that the launch date of the company, 2012? Yeah, correct. Right at the beginning, January, 2012. And what are you doing uh, today with your current team size? Believe it or not, we've got 150 people uh, say, right around the world. Why do you say believe it or not? <laughs> uh, because I still think of us as, as a startup. Yeah. And so I get sort of surprised when I look at my team size. And it's getting hard to, to know them all by name at this stage as, as it grows. <laughs> uh, are you, where are you guys so, all based? In that one office or no? No, uh, around the world, actually. Uh, we're in Israel, Palestine, Spain, U.S., Taiwan. Uh, so we're right around the world, um, which you have to be because it's international freight. So there's no point being in one country. Uh, every shipment involves at least two countries. Yep. Where are you, your biggest office, though? Where's that located? Um between uh, our office here and also Barcelona, where, where we acquired a company that's very big as well. You're in Menlo Park right now? No, I'm in Jerusalem. Oh, Jerusalem. Okay, very good. Jerusalem yeah. and, uh, and uh, Barcelona. Jerusalem, near Jerusalem in Ramallah, and then also Barcelona. Those are the big three offices, yeah. Very cool. Now, take us back real quick again, forward, fast forward again to today. These new freight forwarders that are paying you, what, I mean, what are they, I, ma I imagine you have tons of different cohorts, but on average, what are they paying per month to access your software? Uh, that's a great question. Um, th th there's a big, <laughs> there's a big spread. Um, Tell me about your perfect from customer. As little, yeah, I mean, it starts from as little as, as even less than a thousand dollars a month. Okay. Um, and it goes up for a big global freight forwarder with tens of thousands of employees, then it's well into the tens of thousands of dollars a month. Yep. And is this, uh, you, you mentioned seats, is that your big trigger? That's what creates that Delta at your, your price based off yeah. number of seats? Yeah, we could have two users or a thousand users, so there's quite a, a variation. Okay. Maybe worth just explaining the. You mentioned the the interaction between the SaaS and the marketplace. Yeah, share more. There's a particularly yeah, there's a particularly important reason for this, which is let, let's talk about why why most marketplace startups fail. Um, the reason why most marketplace startups fail is because of the chicken and egg problem. So you launch a marketplace, you've got the platform. But the buyers come and they don't see any sellers, so they, they go away. And the sellers come, they don't see any buyers, they go away. So you've got this chicken and egg problem where it's very hard to get to a critical mass which makes both sides happy. And once you do, you've got a really valuable growing business. So, so we solved that with a SaaS. We, we spent the first four years selling SaaS to freight forwarders. And now we already have 1,000 sellers who we have a relationship with all ready, to sell, you know, all ready to sell on our marketplace. And so day one, when we launched for the buyers, these import-export companies, we already had access to multiple sellers. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it's a really good way of, of sort of solving the biggest uh, challenge in a, in a marketplace business. It makes a lot of sense. Now, uh, Zvi, before we get in kind of the wrap-up section here, do you, I was like asking this, do you remember what your first year revenue was? How embarrassing was it? Oh, that's easy. It was zero. <laughs> was it? So 2012, <laughs> when was your first dollar of revenue? 2013? 
Yeah, and, and dollar is about right. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was still very small. Look, this is why we raised a lot of money when you go, go after these big B2B complex industries. It, it's not like a consumer product where you can create a, a minimum viable product in a few months and start sales. Yeah. Um, it, it's a more complex product and it took longer. We only started really getting revenue in year three. And then um, take me through, well, actually, so year three would have been what, 2013? 14, yeah. 2014. And, and like, did you break a million that year? Was it meaningful revenue or was it really, you know, like six figures? Yeah, still a little, still a little under. I think yeah. it was by 2015 we were into the millions. So. Oh, great. Good, good, good. And have you broken, have you broken kind of the, the magical $10 million run rate at this point? I imagine with 60 million raised, you must have. So I think now I'm going to uh, actually decline to get into details. <laughs> He's punting. Definitely... He's punting. Can you feel it? <laughs> All right. So take me back to some of the economics on the marketplace side. So so what what kind of vol- – I'm curious what kind of volume you're processing per month. So how many kind of single containers are being processed or matched through your system each month? So now it's getting into, let's see, many hundreds. Okay maybe breaking a thousands of shipments a month. They're not all full containers. Sometimes people are shipping just a few pallets, less than a container, or sometimes they're shipping air cargo. But in many cases, it is, of course, a full container or even multiple full containers. Yep. Um, and and that's good. I mean, we, we, we've achieved, even exceeded our plan, you know, our business plan in terms of the number of shipments we were hoping to do. It's still less than one year since, la- since launch of the marketplace. Mm-hmm. And take into account that before Freightos, no one had ever sold freight online and nobody had ever bought freight online. So we're starting to educate all of these freight forwarders and and more importantly, to educate all these import-export companies that you don't need to wait three days anymore. You can now get instant pricing and very competitive pricing. So it's quite a market education that we're embarking on. And and so far, yeah, ahead of schedule. So our hundreds or or even thousands of shipments a month are still a teeny proportion of of an industry where... But there are millions, so it's still a, a tiny proportion. But it's actually, uh, you know, very meaningful in the sense that it's um, it's the equivalent of, of airline tickets in 1997. You yep. know, it was still a small proportion of the industry, but it was the beginning of a very big change. Zvi, how many buyers have used the platform so far? These folks importing, exporting their tripods. Um, yeah, thousands. Uh, okay. I don't don't have an well, exact number. Above a thousand. I had yes. And then you sellers, you still have about a thousand of the freight forwarders. So actually, less. we have a thousand freight forwarders who use our software. Okay. Uh, we haven't brought them all onto our marketplace in one go because then, then you'd have a misbalance. You'd have too much sure. supply and not enough demand. So a few dozen of them are, are actively selling and, and then there's a waiting list. And, and we sort of, for now, we're trying to create a balance between the buyers and sellers. So we're, we're actually not looking for more sellers just yet till we build up the buy buyers. side. There you have it. All right, Zvi, let's wrap up here with the famous five. Number one, what's your favorite business book? What's my favorite business book? I mean, I'd have to go right back to Crossing the Chasm. Jeffrey Moore, it's a good one. Moore. Yeah, it was a long time ago, but it's still a classic. That beautiful orange cover. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying right now? Is there what, sorry? A CEO you're following or studying right now? No, uh, following and studying would be an exaggeration. It's, it's I do try to follow Jeff Bezos when I have time. I, I guess that everyone does. Uh, but it's so incredible and scary what he's achieved. Um, so studying would be an exaggeration, but I do enjoy uh, from time to time keeping track of him, that's for sure. Number three, is there a favorite online tool you have, like Acuity Scheduling? I, I started using re- uh, recently uh, Mixmax as a, as a Gmail plugin for my scheduling. Mm-hmm. That's kind of cool because I, d- I don't have an assistant. So I do look for good tools to, to help doing some of those functions. Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? I sleep well. I, I sleep seven hours every night. But okay. I work the other, I work the other <laughs> 17 hours. But yeah. and, and what's your current situation? Married, single, do you have kids? I'm married. I've got uh, I've got kids, and I've just uh, just got a couple of grandkids, actually. Oh wow! Congrats. How many how many how many direct kids do you have, and how many grand? I'm curious. How many grandkids? I've got four kids, uh-huh. and my daughter, my daughter just had twin girls. So That's I've, amazing. I've just, uh, two grandkids. Yeah. Well, congratulations. And uh, Zvi, how old are you? I'm 47. Okay. So last question. Take us back 27 years. What do you wish your 20 year old self knew? What did I? Know? Yeah. yeah. It's. <laughs> That's a tough question. Um, I, I think um, you know what I've learned in Freightos is that it's it's okay for a startup to take it to take on a big conservative industry, 
Uh, I wasn't ready to do that back then. I, I was an entrepreneur shortly after, not not 20, but shortly after that I became an entrepreneur. Um, but I was sort of looking for new areas or, or, you know, I never never thought I could take on a big conservative industry. Uh, but now I've, I'm taking on freight and my, I've got a brother who's taking on insurance. <laughs> and so I've learned that uh, I've learned that a startup with a good idea can transform a, a big old in- industry. So that that's an exciting thing which took me many years to learn. There you guys have it. Go after big conservative industries. They can be fun. You can do it. Founded in 2012. Again, Zvi joining us this morning. Founder of Freitas. His team, team is now 150 folks spread all over the world, but mainly in Jerusalem and Barcelona. They started with their software as a service product. Now up to about a thousand customers. The smallest ones pay, you know, a grand per month, all the way up to tens of thousands per month, depending on how large of a freight forwarder they are. Again, and they help now with their marketplace solution match importers and exporters with these freight forwarders to bring efficiencies to a very old conservative systems. V, thank you for taking us to the top. Thanks, Nathan.